All right, Joe, thanks for being with me, buddy. I know uh, we're excited about this book that you put together. And it's called Secrets of Top Selling Agents, Habits, Mindsets, and Tactics of Real Estate Superstars or Real Estate Producers. Right? And it, right now it's on Amazon. You can take a look at it. This one in particular has got a whole bunch of amazing people on it, including me and Nick. Right. That's awesome. Thank you for that. We really it is for sure. Uh, but it's also got other people in it, dude. Like, what do we got? Like Tom Ferry, you said. Tom Ferry, Lee Brown. Uh, we've got Dirk Zeller, who's a Dirk really Zeller. good friend of ours as yep. well. Uh, Floyd Wickman, right? That's pretty awesome. Michael Mayer, who's yep. also a great friend of ours. So what you've done is you've outlined these chapters and you've put in uh, an essence of what they usually talk about and say, hey, highlighting this you guys should be doing this so i love how you've outlined those chapters can you go over just like an outline of what this looks yeah. like and then we'll go into the for sale by owner expired yeah, absolutely yeah so what we did first of all the, the the research for this book came from actual secrets of top selling agents webinar episodes including yours so you and nick did the one which we're going to talk about today farming like a boss and and so that was that's hence the name of the book you know secrets of top selling agents so doing the research, it had to be based off of, they had to be at least as part of our webinar series. And you know, what happens is, you know how it is Tristan, it's, it's very hard sometimes as, as an agent to, to find the time to watch 14 hours of content because you know, there's 14 chapters in the book. So I just, what I decided to do is just say, let me take my favorite episodes, take the meat and potatoes from each one and, and put them into this book. So each, each chapter is a separate episode. And, and, and what I've done is I broke it down into what I call the four cornerstones um, of, of, of this particular book. And the, the first one is, the, is from Michael Mayer and, and Larry Kendall. It's about habits and mindsets. Like what do super producers do that others aren't doing? And so Tom Ferry also touches on this as well in, in, his, in his chapter. So it, it's things like getting in the right routines. It's, it's things of how I schedule my day, how I block off time. So there's chapter in that because... Because I, I, Inman just did a thing where they had uh, uh, the top 10 business books based out, you know, from, re from their readership. And two of those books are featured in, in this book, in, in this, you know, my book, which, which unbeknownst to me, I just found out two weeks ago when, when this happened, but it's Larry Kendall's Ninja Selling was one of the top 10 books. And these are books that are up there with like, who moved my cheese? Uh, you know, how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. I mean, these are classic books. So Larry Kendall's Ninja Selling and the Michael Mayer seven levels, the seven L seven levels of communication. So, so we, Focus, that's the first cornerstone is about habits and mindsets, getting yourself in the right mindset, practicing the habits and following the habits of super producers. The second one is all about lead generation. So everything from farming like a boss to generate leads to FISBOs to um, uh, open houses, a whole new take on open houses. To, to lead generation from Instagram and social media. So we got Marky Lemons Ryle doing the Instagram one. Uh, we got Jim Remley. Uh, uh, he's from or also from Oregon, like Dirk. Uh, he's doing the one on Fizbo. So we got really good, uh, each chapter's about that. The third one is real estate investing. That's where I bring in Dirk Zeller, talking about how to use like a self-directed IRA and, and, and how to you know, do some, diff some different types of investing. Uh, Linda McKissick also Keller, Keller Williams, how she was able to build her real estate. She owns 87 properties, 17 vacation rentals. So we talk about her step and how she did that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty big. And the final one is how to build a team. You know, the thing is, I think a lot of people out there want to build a team and, and we're in, sometimes we're in this feast or famine, uh, you know, cycle of business where sometimes we definitely can use more assistant and sometimes we're like, I don't know what to do. We, we know how to, to do that. So we bring in uh, Lee Brown and Linda McKissick as well to talk about um, how, to, how to build a team from your first person you hire, your, your assistant to the second person, to the third person, how to, what ads to put in the, you know, and where to advertise and get the biggest bang for your buck, how much to pay each person. So it goes into four, those four cornerstones of what I like to call about real estate business. Dude, I love that. Well, dude, let's, let's then get started into our section, which yeah. is called farming like a boss. You ready for it? Let's do it. All right. I've got a, a presentation, so I'm going to go ahead and take that on and you can, you can interrupt me at any time because you're the one who kind of wrote it into the book there. So thanks for that. There you go. Farming like a boss, Joe. Uh, it's, it's really, the idea came from me breaking into different farms here in Southern California over a, a long period of time of testing and failing. 
Uh, but one thing that I love to always start with is this patience is a key element to success. Uh, Bill Gates says that he also says that focus is extremely important, right? Focus is probably the number one thing, but patience specifically for what we're doing here, farming is super key. And what we start with is usually numbers. And we like to look at numbers because it really determines where we're going to focus. Sometimes we blindly jump into where we want to farm without knowing the demographic. So you go to the bottom two there, it says seller, sellers who were 18 to 34 years of age had the shortest tenure in their homes selling within four years. That's, that's pretty awesome, right? So you want, you want to go into an area that has a higher turnaround, you find out what the demographics are in your area, right? And compared to those over 75 years of age who sold their home typically after 17 years, I would assume this stat is about a year old, a year and a half old. That stat has gone up and it's continued to going to go up for, for probably the next few years because of where we're at uh, with the pandemic. So this is really the process to farming over years of farming. This is the very first thing I did, Joe. When I jumped into real estate in 2003, 2004, I was doing a lot of homework before I was jumping into real estate because was, it was my last year of college. And I was studying, I had almost finished all my courses, but I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna jump into real estate. My mom says I should. Uh, everybody drives a nice car in real estate. And I was like, the, the thing that I wanted to do was farm because that's what I was being told to do by my office, that and call. But I couldn't call, I couldn't do anything because I didn't have a license yet. So I started preparing on farming. And so I started kind of researching with the people that were already successful on what they were doing. So I started off pretty quickly, but it did take a long time for me to get going. What happened along the way of me farming that first year is I got really lucky. The very first two months, I knocked on a door as I was farming and the person picked up. He's like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not interested in, in, um, in selling or anything, but my friends here and he was talking to me about buying. If you want to talk to him, I'm like, sure. So I end up talking to the guy and he ends up buying with, it. It ends up being one of my first transactions. One, but we're not first three transactions. If a friend was at a home. So here's what it looks like. Three to four months out, people begin to recognize you if you're doing this routinely, which is farming. I'll show you the whole process of what farming looks like. Six to eight you know, months. Tr if I could jump in there real quick, Tristan, I do yeah. want to say that one of the things, I just talked about this on a webinar the other day, and I used this, what you talk about is doing the research first. And I could tell you from, I mean, I, I, going back to, <laughs> to this book, I made so many mistakes in real, I'm sure we all have, you know, and and what I, I think is so important for people to, to understand is to do your homework on the demographic data. I mean, that's so important. I, I chose a farm based on the fact that I, grew, I lived there my whole life and I grew up there. But when I, when I, when I moved to that house with my family, my parents, you know, everybody, all the, all the couples were young. And at that time, they weren't moving. And by the time I got into my farm, they still weren't moving. And so I, I was sending out these, you know, these postcards knocking on doors and people just weren't moving. It took a while. Now the turnover has since happened there. But, you know, that is so important to really do your homework and research on that because uh, subdivisions vary. I mean, some, it's, it sounds like a no brainer, but if you do, some just don't turn over nearly, nearly as much as another one. And you'll have so many more opportunities if you just do your homework. So I, I really wanted to point that out because I think a lot of people don't do their homework prior to jumping into a, uh, into a geographic farm. That's true, man. It's very true. The homework, homework can make your, your work on the farming side a lot easier and give you more, more production at the end as you, you need to be focusing in a good area. So six to eight months, they start remembering you nine to 12 months, you're in the running. It doesn't mean you're going to get the listings because I've seen some areas it takes three, four years to break in, which is insane. Uh, but remember, you're, you're in this as a career. A lot of people want a quick turnaround. And this business, if you want to do it right and you want to last a long time into it, it's about building those relationships. And just like buyers, sellers takes the same thing. It takes a long time in nurture. And the number one mistake agents make when it comes to farming is they're trying to be everywhere. Right? They're thinking they could cover such a wide area, but the key is you've got to be in one place a lot, not everywhere a little. And when you look at and you talk to those, those people that are doing it well, 
It's always giving value to the people that you connect with the most. And that doesn't have to be a large group. It could be a very small community. It could be a very small group of people that begin to trust you, that, that really connect with you. And that's what we're really looking for, Joe. And I think you can apply that to everything, not just farming. But when we're looking at farming, you've got to change that mindset a little bit. And it's okay that your farm is small. It's okay that you're starting with a small group of homes, right? And Joe, if there's a question here or there, I can't see it on my end. But if you want to throw it in, it came in through the chat. Oh, there it is. I think I did got it. Oh, no, they're just letting us know where they're from. All right, the key to this, Joe, is what I call, you've got to be a niche celebrity. You can't, you can't think that you're going to be covering everywhere, but you do want to hit people enough in your area through what I'm going to show you, that when you show up at a coffee shop, when you show up at the local supermarket or you're going wherever locally, people recognize you. And they say, you know, whether it's say, oh, I got your mailer, or I see that you've got another listing. Oh, I saw you on Facebook. Oh, I read that last blog you sent. Great newsletter, right? Or, wow, I saw that community event that you did, right? It's a combination of so many different things that you're hitting people up with that you, in essence, become a celebrity, right? People know you. And I think that's what we really have to go in and say, okay, how do we do this? Well, first, you start by choosing your area. And here's what it looks like. Who's your target? You've got to start small. The biggest mistake I made when I started farming is I thought I, thought I was going to cover a whole massive area with thousands of homes, right? And I was, I was new, I was young in my early 20s, right out of college. And I thought, well, I can walk all this neighborhood because my tactic was I was going to farm and walk and knock, right? I hadn't included the internet part at the beginning. But I realized that that quickly wasn't going to happen, right? I was dead tired. It wasn't, I was not consistent over a few months. So I started dwindling it down. I recommend you start around 500 homes. That's the key. And then you look and you study your map and you understand what homes are where, where streets are where, what shops are close by. I think that helps you really connect with your local audience better. Because the moment they start saying, well, so-and-so on this street was thinking of selling, or are you familiar with that corner house with that big tree? People don't even know streets sometimes. Or are you familiar with this and that? And so this is why one of the things I eventually did is I printed out a map of the area that I covered, and I had it posted to the side of my wall. And I would know the streets. I would know how many houses are there. I would know the track. I would know the different types of homes there. And I got to know the area very well along with the streets. And so that was very helpful. Know your demographics. When I started, the only way I started knowing the demographics was because I was actually knocking in person. Now there are lots of other ways to do it. But I started understanding when I started knocking, I'm like, oh, got it. Nobody's home at this time. Right. And every time I do come at a later time, there are a lot of families in this area. Right. So you have to look, how old are they? Show that like the demographic I showed at the very beginning now the ages, the younger ages tend to move up quicker and the older ages tend to stay where they're at longer. Plus their homes at different times. The message that you're delivering has to be different versus those that are in a different area. So you've got to look at price points too. Like Joe, when I'm mailing to, to Malibu versus locally, um, parts of Malibu on the beach, right? The message I'm delivering is different than the message I'm delivering to a different part of town, right? So that, that, has, to, that has to be in your mind as well. And does it fit your lifestyle? Is it close to where you are? Is it, is it close to where you're going to drive through to consistently show up? through a year, through two years, through three years. One of the biggest mistakes we make as real estate agents is that we start farming in an area and it just, it doesn't fit where we wanna be. It's not even close to us. So we're not even gonna show up, right? So you've gotta think, am I gonna show up here often? Is this, the best thing I recommend is make it close to your house. You know you're gonna show up a lot, right? Or close to your office. This way, 
it's part of the process. It's part of showing up all the time. Any questions on this, Joe? This is, uh, this is great. I think the part where you talk about, um, talk about the people go, they want to be all, you know, everywhere. Uh, and it's so important to start small. I think, I think people, when they look, first look at a farm and they say, oh man, that doesn't seem like a lot of opportunities, you know, and it's, but, but you, you have to hit it more often. And I think that that's, you, you hit the nail on the head there. And I think the two biggest, the two biggest things that when, when you're choosing your farm is, is like you said, know the demographics, know the turnover rates, and also don't make it too big because if, if you, if you're, if you're mailers or whatever you're doing, you can't get it, get them out as often as you, as you can to a smaller farm. Yeah. You're not going to get that name recognition, that brand recognition. And, uh, that's really important. I'm glad, I'm glad you really you, you, uh, hit that really good, Tristan. I love it, dude. All right, step number two, study your farm, right? So often we just jump into things without studying, especially real estate agents, right? I did. I just jumped in without understanding uh, where I was marketing to. I did homework as to what I was going to deliver, what streets I was going to walk through, and that part of it. But I didn't study who was living there, right? I didn't I didn't really study the souls, expires, cancels, or withdrawn. And I quickly started picking that up. I'm like, okay, so-and-so is mentioning that this home sold, right? And I have no idea what they're talking about, right? Or they keep on saying that that home over there keeps on getting really relisted, but never sells, right? And they want to know more information about that. Or this property was on the market and it's no longer on the market. This information is very crucial to people when they call you up when they get to talk to you or when you have an opportunity to meet with them in person to do a presentation, right? They're gonna ask you questions. So you need to study the area, need to understand what's happening. So that's, that's really important. Number three, study your competition. This was one thing that I did when I then eventually wanted to break into an area that was outside of where I lived because I didn't know, I didn't know what I didn't know. So. I quickly did what I call a SWOT analysis. Everybody, you can Google this. This is I didn't create this. This is something that's out there. I don't Important. Know. Hey, Tristan, those are the SWOT analysis. I'm telling you, when you put that out, that's, I've never. It's great that you use that. I mean, that stuff I got in business in business school, and I mean, major Fortune 500 companies they use SWOT analysis. So I love how you did that because it is everybody should be using this, and it's just it's it's a great way to break it down. So I just wanted to let you know that that SWOT analysis is critical. Dude, thank you. I don't know who created the SWOT analysis, but it works. And that's when you look into really breaking into a farm area, I highly recommend that you look at the strengths. Look at those agents that are really doing well there, right? Start looking at, are they mailing? Are they online? Are they on Zillow? Do they get reviews on Zillow? Are they on Yelp? But where are they? Are they, do they actually live close by? Do they have an office there? Like one of the one of the things that I did is is when we were going into Malibu, I did a I did a SWOT analysis. I looked at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and that's how I discovered that the opportunity that I had to be able to break into Malibu was online, and it was through buyers. It wasn't the other way around. I've instantly found that the guy who owns Malibu is Chris Cortazzo. He's like he's one of the top agents in the world. The guy makes a ton. He also lives there and he owns a whole bunch of homes, right? And so that's how I quickly learned the strengths here, strengths, my weaknesses, their weaknesses, our opportunities and our possible threats. And it's still the same. You look at Malibu, it's kind of weak online. And that's where we, that's where we thrive, right? That, that was our in through buyers. So it's important to take a look at a SWAT when you're going to break into to a farm. Next, create valuable content. And I've broken it down for you so you understand what that means. You want to have a website that has a blog, an IDX so people can search for properties, something that brings in the local community aspect to, to really your area there. And you've got, to, you've got to connect that to that area that you cover. And it can't be like the whole, like I, like I was doing before, which is the whole area, all of SoCal or all of a county, you almost have to break it down into that small little track or area, right? Because people will connect with you more when they know that you're a professional in that niche. And so I live in a community, Joe, that has about 2,400 homes, 
That's it. And to mail to that consistently, to target that consistently, to create a website, a newsletter, have content and drop-offs, right? That's the key. No, because here I've got my average price point to be at about 1.2 million. And if I continually do this through the year, right? I look at my, my P and L and I'm saying, okay, if I'm mailing, if I'm doing this online, if I'm creating a newsletter for them, they know I cover the area. If I'm creating video content, they know that the video content pertains to this. I'm interviewing people that are locals. I'm talking to people that are locals and I'm dropping, dropping off things that matter here locally right and that starts setting you apart you start creating valuable content for that specific area i see it i saw a chat uh let me see if it's a question here yeah there is a question um so dimitri's asking could you please compare and contrast different ways to reach to your farm so for example yeah. direct mail versus personal phone calls versus ringless voicemail what works best for you dimitri we'll get into that in the next section so don't don't even worry about it Eric, if you can't see the PowerPoint, log in and out. Sometimes Zoom gives you um, some glitches there. Like it didn't, it didn't let us go into Facebook. It's, we're still trying on the back end. It's still denying us. So take a picture of this. This is what you need to be doing to create valuable content. And, and the next one, which is, hold on, here we go. What, what we've done is we've created some Facebook ads where we retargeting people locally so that they see just listed they see open houses when we were having open houses they see the new homes that are going on the market and as people click and engage right you see the retargeting pixel right oh, here is right in the middle retargeting pixel then all of a sudden they're going to start getting different lists of homes blogs other homes on the market close by questions and let us help you all of a sudden they start getting other things it's just not the same thing, right? This is us targeting them online. And so you start having to do something different than what other people are doing and you start standing out, right? And then you can field questions if you see any, Joe. But this is, for example, how we have our, our database on the left. You see on the left, as people are scrolling through, it pop, we pop up on their Instagram feed and their Facebook feed and we pop up with properties. We pop up with stuff that's happening locally. And as they engage, right? And they save properties or they look at properties, we're notified. And this is how we re reach out to them, Joe. So Maggie, Maggie's asking, so who sets up these campaigns for you? So we have a team that does it. We, we hire two different sets of companies. One is Ylopo. Ylopo does this for us. They do dynamic ads for real estate and also Chime. Chime helps us out as well. So you can look into any of those. They do this, they do this for you, but you've got to have a list, right? That's the key. Any other questions on this? Nope. All right, good. So here's some ideas on video uh, video. If, if you're following along with the way the world is going on social media, you start with what Snapchat did a few years back, which was stories and Instagram took that and said, well, let me show you how stories can really change the world. And now they have up to a billion stories done in a day, a day, a billion. That's an insane number of stories. Stories are short video clips or short static clips of what's going on in your life, usually 15 seconds, right? So TikTok said, well, I'm going to one up everybody and create a whole social media platform just based on the story idea, which is up to a minute video, right? And now you've got TikTok, which is where social media is heading as a whole. It's not necessarily important to be on TikTok. It's just, it's just important to understand where social media is heading, which is minute clips. And so you look at the top videos on Facebook back in 2017, the ideas are still the same. People are still engaging with how-to videos. The challenge is that real estate agents aren't still making great how-to videos. Right? When we think of value, Joe, we think of giving back to the consumer. They don't want to know you just listed and you just sold and you just helped whoever. It's cool as branding, but if that's the only message you're delivering, you're failing. You've got to start coming from a different point of, well, what does a consumer really want? They have questions about processes, like how long does an inspection take? What is a home inspection about? What should I be looking for? How do I get a loan? 
Do, how does my credit score need to look if I need to get a loan, right? And how much money do I need to put down as a down payment if I'm going to buy a home? Can I purchase 100%? Can I purchase with 5% down, 3% down? What's the process? So you start looking at how to, and you start getting better ideas as to what content to create and how to retarget people with this, right? You put $100 behind a video on Facebook in a community, and all of a sudden, it starts blowing up if you have the right how-to video. And we've done this before. I'll give you the best example, Joe. I'm playing around with TikTok right now. And a Labor Day weekend, which was last weekend, I, I did a video with, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna I'm gonna stop sharing really quick, just to show you. I did a video with this thing. This is the new Osmo 4. Uh, it's a gimbal, right? And it just came out, literally came out like two weeks ago. And I did a how to use it and why it's good on TikTok. No money in, just regular video, 53 seconds. And I have 600,000 views right now on the video. 600,000 views. I have now 10,000 followers from it, right? And it's from giving value. I simply did a video that showed how to use it, why I love it. And you can go find it on TikTok. And now I have companies reaching. I only have 10,000 followers. I don't have a million followers, right? I just happened to go viral on one video. But now I had DJI reach out to me. And they're like, you know, your video went viral. Um, can we do more videos? I'm like, um, sure. I mean, I want, I, want an, I want to do a giveaway of this thing, dude. Be kind of cool on TikTok, right? So now yeah. we're, we're talking back and forth with them in regards to that. But it goes back to value. What are you giving back, right? It's not what you're selling. It's what you're giving. The moment people, there was a quote by Sam Walton uh, that I read earlier today, and it was, I'm trying to remember it. It was, people want to feel like you're working for them, right? The moment that they feel that they start connecting with you at a deeper level. And I think we miss that. We miss that. Rosie has a question. Uh, do you farm or do you circle prospect on listings you have, which are not in your geographic farm? Rosie, we do both. But when we're talking about farming specifically, that's a, that's a neighborhood, that's an area that we continually do forever. It never stops. And occasionally we do circle prospecting as well. But our success has been more on the farming side. Jen, off that, that little, um, the, the diagram you put up with all the different uh, ads you, you run on Facebook, you have a little thing that says MoFu. What does MoFu mean? M-O-F-U. Ah, let me go that. Uh, was that right there? MoFu? Yeah, it's, in the, it's right between the second and third column there. Or let yeah, me, row. Let me that. row. I have a, you know what? Let me do it. Let me see if I can give you guys the whole explanation on this because it actually goes over everything, um, which is top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And so that's the middle right? The top of funnel, yeah, I couldn't find it. But the top of funnel is where all everybody's coming through. They're, they're not ready yet, Joe. The people that are coming through, they're just searching. They see your ad maybe on Facebook. They're just inquiring. Some people are just looking. Just They're just looking, right? I'm always browsing. I'm always looking at Malibu homes on the beach, right? For 10 million. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I'm like extremely top of funnel. Middle of funnel is people that are kind of in the middle. They've been in there for a while. Now they're continually coming back, right? Either because you're retargeting them or they're interested. That's middle. It's a little more purposeful. Bottom of funnel is when they're usually ready. And they're usually ready to come out of the funnel and purchase. That's what the funnel is, right? It's an upside down triangle. And so that, that's what it's referring to. And let, me, let me share my screen again and go back to... Does that answer your question? Yeah. And then the other one, there's another question. You mentioned uh, two platforms for creating the campaigns. Um, can, you, can you say those again? I think you said one of them was Chime, you said? One of them is Chime and the other one is Ylopo, Y-L-O-P-O. And they help both of those companies help with the retargeting of the database. So whatever your database looks like, it could be your actual database uh, of clients, people, customers on there. Uh, that came from everywhere, or it could be a farm area too, like we do. We retarget to a farm area specifically. And so they continually see our things online and in person. So now, but why is this important coming from value, right? That's my question. Why is this important? It's important because 
this is a stat from NAR. 31% of sellers say that reputation of the agent is the most important thing, right? And so that reputation has a lot to do with the value you're giving. So that's, that's one thing we forget. We, we have such a short time to connect with people, right? Whether it's online, in person, something that we're sending out, it's like that. And our reputation is tied to how we function online. What perception is being created on everything we're delivering, right? And so if it's that, if that perception is, oh, this person, this person's always selling, right? It turns off some people that you, that's all you do. But if you're coming back from a point of, well, this person keeps on giving me so much value because they show me how to do this. They show me how to do that. Oh, I'm also seeing them sell. This person's very professional, right? It goes back to them feeling like you're actually doing something that's making a difference for them, right? And so this is where I say, look, you can create your own reputation through review sites, through Yelp, right? Through Google. Those are the two that I would focus on highly over Zillow, over all the other, over the Facebook ones. Google, the importance of Google is that when you Google the top most visited websites in the world, Google's the number one, right? And YouTube's number two. Facebook's like number three or four, depends on the website you're looking on. But reviews are really important, especially when you tie them into clients. Let's say, Joe, we just closed. And I say, hey, Joe, can you write me up a review, please? Um, obviously, if we did a great job, I'm going to ask you, right? And I say, Joe, just could you do me a favor? When you write the review, and I do it by email typically. I say, when you write the review, can you include the area that I covered for you that you bought the home in, right? Or the city. And so all of a sudden, it, your review starts serving as a form of Google. Right, so when people are searching for property or searching for an agent in an area, they type that up and our reviews pop up. So reviews are really important in the sense that they're creating a reputation for us, not only through SEO, search engine optimization, which by the way, you guys do really well at, right? Homes.com on SEO. Uh, but they're also serving a point of us being able to share that with our clients. And so next, social media, where I suggest if you're not already on there and haven't created some type of awareness through Facebook, through a Facebook group, through a Facebook community, that you really look into that because there's no better way to connect with an audience than through creating a group that's specifically for a community, right? The community I live, on, live in already has two. Actually, they have three because there's also a mom's group in there. And those are so alive, sending information back and forth. And the other thing uh, when it comes to social media, look at Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a place that a lot of people can connect on. And the more you contribute on there, the more people start seeing you. One of my friends, his name's Abraham Walker. He just posted up on Nextdoor at the beginning of, I think it was the beginning of this year, where he just typed in, either the beginning of the, this year or, yeah, it was. It was the beginning of this year. He tapped into next door. Hey, guys, I'm, I'm new to the area and something along these lines. I may be wrong a little bit, Joe, but I know the results. He typed in, I'm new to the area and I want to meet up with coffee with as many people in the neighborhood as possible. Let me know what days you guys are available. And all of a sudden, a lot of people started wanting to meet up. Yeah, let's meet up, Abraham. Let's meet up. Let's meet up. So he started meeting up with a lot of people for coffee, started creating relationships off of next door to in person, it reached the point where an article was written about him to the point that he, the CEO of next door reached out to him because he started making such a big difference in the community in this way, which is crazy, right? But he went all in. And so the other thing is you got to go all in on this. You can't half-ass this, right? You half-ass this, you get half-ass results. So next thing, you've got to have a website, like I said, and the website has to be localized, but use it to increase your reputation. Reputation for what? For always bringing value, right? And the same thing with videos. There's some great agents out there that do a great job with videos in regards to connecting with audiences, right? So I, I'm, I'm short on time, but I, I'll, uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm short on time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little faster, Joe, here. 
But making your videos matter, you can touch on so many different things here. Like I told you before, explain certain topics like how to purchase a home through different types of mortgages that are out there, what to look for if you're selling your home for curb appeal, what to look for if you're buying for the first time or if you haven't bought for a long time, or proven tactics, home hacks, home processes. And if at the end of the day, you're just not getting enough engagement, just remember that the world that we live in on social media on most platforms is you've got to pay to show up, right? This is why ads manager is there on Facebook and Instagram, YouTube with Google AdSense, and you've got to put money in there. If you put $100 behind one great listing or one great video about the neighborhood, you will get good results from it. You just have to know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, that's where you bring in the professionals, right? I don't have time to do all of this all by myself. So I bring in people that are great at it. Companies like Wailopo and Chime and my friend Travis, Travis Tom, who does a great job with Facebook, things like that. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. And Joe, there's a, there's a rare opportunity right now with TikTok. I know that TikTok's on the news, uh, good and bad. You know, there's this, well, they have a lot of our information and, and the president's like, well, I'm going to cut them off if they don't get bought out by somebody soon. Well, Oracle looks like they're partnering up with, with TikTok for the U.S. the U.S. Uh, portion of TikTok, not the whole TikTok, but just for the U.S. And um, they have a, we have 100 million users in TikTok, American users in the United States. That's a lot, right? That's, that's a crap load, and it's growing, right? And all of a sudden, the demographic doesn't look like it's 13 years old anymore. The demographic is trending up and you're looking at 20 to 32 now, which is a massive difference in less than a year. And so that's the only place that I can tell you right now that you don't have to pay to play there because the proof that I had over the weekend where I have 600,000 600, views and who knows how many comments and likes off of one video is just proof that it's still early on and you can jump into this social media platform to grow a business. So uh, next here, here are, here are some resources that we use for websites for creating better quality. WordPress, obviously you can create a blog through there. That's what we've done. We have a couple of WordPress sites. LCA Marketing Center we use to create our, our flyers, to create presentations, to create postcards. That's our product from Lab Code Agents. You can go there, LCA Marketing Center. It's Kind of like Canva, but specifically for real estate. Check it out. There's an app for it as well. Rev, and you know what? There's one that, there's one, There's another one besides Rev. It's called Zub Titles. Instead of subtitles, it's called Zub with a Z. Try Rev and Zub, but what we do with Rev and subtitles is this. We, we have them caption our videos because we know that most people before COVID, now COVID is a little different, but before COVID, and when we go back to somewhat being normal, people watch videos without sound, right? Some people, they're in the back of a classroom, they're at a meeting, and they're watching videos. And so subtitles are really important in that sequence. Sometimes they're in bed just watching a video, and they can't turn on the audio. So this is why we love captioning all our videos. If you're going to run them outside of Facebook, use Rev and use or take a look at the subtitles, both really great. If you're running them on Facebook, Facebook now captions everything, so you're lucky. Uh, resources for our websites, you can take a look at Firepoint, you can take a look at Chime, you can take a look at Ylopo. Vemly is a really great app, and that's how it's spelled, Vemly. It allows you to, I think I might have an example, let me see, no I don't. All right, it, it allows you to put in captioning at the very top of the video or at the bottom, like a, a heading, and you can throw it onto Instagram. You can throw it onto anywhere you want. It's really good. And SmartZip, uh, they still have the algorithm that they're using, but SmartZip has been pretty good in the sense that gathering information for, for really uh, finding those people that are looking to move. Uh, but next, engage. That's, that's the key. This is where a lot of people drop off, right? The engagement part. And so this is, these are the ways that we like to engage. Um, when we can, we're door knocking when we're also mailing as well, right? And we start off with 500 mailers in an area. And we, we have a local company that we use. And we also have a, a friend of mine, his name is Jeff Fitzer. If you're in lab codes, you know Jeff. 
Jeff runs a whole region for a lending company and he, his whole department, he has like a Kinko's in his, in his lending department and they run all of our, all of our flyers, all of our postcards, and we team up with them for mailers. So for us, it's been easy. Uh, there's, there's also other choices like core fact. Joe, do you guys have a go-to for mailers? No, I, that's, I, no, that's why I think it's great that you, that you're posting all this stuff about, about, uh, who your, who your resources are for this. Cause that was also one of the questions too. So that was, uh, yeah. And good. when you mail, when you mail, we're asking you, and I'll, I'll show you a breakdown of what, uh, ours look like a little bit when you're mailing, the hardest part is to keep ROI, right? So we put a phone number on there from a company called call action, call action.co. It's not call action.com. It's call action.co. And the phone number there is, is that a, it's a very specific phone number for the mailers so that if anybody calls back on that phone number, we track it. We know how our mailers are doing. Some give us more callbacks, some don't, right? This way we can track some of our ROI there. Online community, I really highly suggest you create a blog, a local blog or a social outlet somehow like through uh, LinkedIn groups or Facebook groups or some type of a community outside. It doesn't have to be on social media, but it can be an online community. And there are, there are companies out there, I think one of them is called Mighty Group, where there are companies out there that create groups, right? You don't have to be part of social media and you can push that. So you can take a look at that online community. In the sense, I, I know some agents, I haven't done this, but they've created podcasts for their local cities, local communities where they're interviewing local shops, right? Coffee shops or pizzerias, restaurants and different people that are, that are there locally. I love that idea. So the deeper you go into your community, the better. Next, when you meet people. Jay story, that Zuma, that Zuma J story that you talked about on the webinar, uh, on the actual secrets webinar, um, you can get, you know, just, just, that was one, you, it was one of your posts on Facebook it was an interview you did with Zuma J and it got so much views and it really brought a lot of attention to, uh, you know, to, to, to your That's page. Funny. Yeah, dude. The very first time we were going to go out to meet him, I think Jake's on the line with me. We, we were going to, Jake's, uh, Jake was going to run that the whole video thing with me like two, three times. We had to cancel two times. And like the, finally, when I got there, Jake didn't end up going with me to record that video. But um, that was a fun, that was a whole fun journey meeting that guy and it really pushing. Hey, wasn't he, he was the mayor of Malibu and was, because yeah, he's a famous server? Stand in double to uh, clean Eastwood as well. So wow. finding somebody locally that does, that is involved in the community deeply can really help you out. So what I suggest, Joe, is really getting to know people that are influential and the best and easiest way to do it is first, if you live in the neighborhood, you know who those people are. The more you get involved in the neighborhood, whether it's through the community, uh, meeting people at restaurants, coffee shops, talking to people, they'll let you know. They'll let you know who those people are. And then you slowly start gravitating and saying, well, Joe, um, hi, I'm you know, Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. You've seen me around. I'm looking to, to really interview people that are in the community that, that have made a difference. Do you know anybody or can you recommend anybody to me? Now, Joe, that is a different approach than, hey, Joe, this is Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. I'm just calling to see if you thought about selling your home anytime soon, and maybe in the next two years. What a different approach, right? Now, all of a sudden, I'm coming from a point of, hey, I want to help the community. I want to just know who you know that's made a difference. And they're like, whoa, yeah, I, I've seen your signs around. I see you online everywhere. Yeah, you know, I know somebody, they've been around for a while. They're 85 years old and they did this and that. Oh, can you connect me? And they're like, you know, I don't, I don't have their phone number, but I know somebody who does. Let me connect you. And you see, that makes a big difference if you start approaching the community in that way, right? And you start growing, you start making relationships, and that's how you start changing the area. Now, one other thing here is you write notes to people you meet. So let's say, Joe, you just sent me somebody and I'm like, ooh, that was really nice of Joe to send me somebody. I would write a note to you and say, thank you, right? It's a big difference in just talking to you and saying thanks by text. I take it one extra step further and connect with you a little bit deeper. And then lastly, on this one, on the engagement part is press release. People don't talk about this enough, 
but PR is really important. They're also really expensive, right? Anywhere between three to five thousand to seven thousand dollars a month. So if you're at that stage in your business where you can afford PR for a specific area, I would highly recommend it. But it's not for everybody, right? And it has to be done over the span of six months to a year. Because the more you show up on newspapers, the more you show up on your local news, the more you show up on magazines, right? The more you'll be able to penetrate through this community or this big area that you're looking to do. So now, next, automate and leverage. What can we automate? Look, we can automate postcards. Uh, we can automate how people call us and leave messages and we text them back. We can automate newsletters. We can automate our drips to our neighbors, which we do. And I left permission spelled wrong there because that's an ongoing joke that Nick and I have, but Nick didn't join us today. So we can't make fun of that one. Uh, but Agent Legend is one that we use for, for drips, which we also use for online leads, by the way. And card sending gifts like uh, send out cards and Eva bot. But there's a lot you can add to, to your farming that can help you automate the process. Because one of the biggest challenges, Joe, is really staying on course and staying consistent through this whole year, two year, three year process of being able to break through, right? Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there's a question uh, from Garrett. Uh, how many houses, so Tristan, because, because yeah, it definitely could get uh, pricey. So how many houses do you currently have in your, in your farm? He's asking. We, we only have 2000. Like I said, oh. that's it. We don't have a lot. Uh, we have another question from Peter. It says he lives in a rural area. Would you farm busier roads where the homes are a quarter mile from each other and the neighbors don't likely don't know each other? I got people live two doors down from me and people don't know each other. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great know. question. I would definitely, it's a rural yeah. area. I would definitely expand to a lot more. Okay. And, and start off with about 500, right? So, okay. Good. And the question of asking me, what areas do we, do we mail to? So my farm, my consistent farm is 2000, but we still mail to every time we just list a home and we just sell a home, we send it out as well. Right. So we're sending out thousands of pieces a month. And now we've been doing this for a while. So we have our, our director of operations, Myra. She knows to set it up with our lender who helps us with the postcards, right? With Jeff Fitzer. And so those postcards are set out, just listed, just sold, boom, done. Right. And I'll, on the next screen, on the next couple of screens, I don't know which one it is, but I'll show you what that looks like too. So, so you guys have a clear idea of our process as well. And Joe, interrupt me with any questions you see, buddy. Uh, perfect. There it is. <clears throat> so this is what we're mailing out to the 2000, right? And we're about to up it a little bit more. We're going to hit up 3000 now um, because we just redid this. This is what we're doing. We're sending out 24 pieces a year and that's two a month, right? But then we're, we're treating it like social media, Joe. We're mixing it up. Right. The difference is you want to look at you want to look at this and all of a sudden it starts looking a little different. Let me unshare this because I want to go a little deeper into this. I've got I've got a few minutes. So I'm going to grab my Google Doc. Let me see where it is. And I'm going to go a little deeper into this so people can understand what this should look like. Uh, Google Docs. So people can understand the details involved in this and I think it's here Malibu I'll show you the latest one we're doing so people can understand the latest and the greatest you don't mind if I sidetrack as a matter of fact that schedule you put in there I think a lot of times people are trying to search for what do I what do I send out and uh and I love how you did that so um yeah I definitely agree. I think you definitely want to see you go deeper into this Okay, perfect. Let me share this. Uh, here we go. Tell me when you can see this, buddy. Can you see it? Yep. All right, good. All right, so we've got a farming outline here. Six local market stats, four, so six, that means six mailers a year. Four mailers on things to do for spring, summer, fall, and winter, right? One, two, three, four. That's why there's four. Two, who you are and what you've done. So Joe, if I'm mailing out, I'm saying, well, who, who are we as a team? And what are the things we've done, right? They don't need to freaking know every month what we've done, right? We've got to space it out. Two top places to eat locally. Okay, now we're treating it a lot more like social, by right? social media. 
Two top places for dessert. There's some great places out here to eat, but there's some great places to go and have dessert as well. Two things I enjoy about Malibu, that's a postcard, right? Places that are a little bit hidden, things that people should be doing. One best local parks. I have kids, right? I did one that one year that was five best local parks in a different area. Uh, top five books to read. Nobody sends that out except us. We're the only ones that I've ever known that sends that postcard out. And so now you go back, you know, finish this off right here. But you go and I've outlined September. This is what September is going to look like. Top places to eat, local market stats. Things to do in the fall, things I enjoy about the neighborhood. November, Thanksgiving story, a story about Thanksgiving, right? Local market stats. December, who we, who we are, things to do. Now, these aren't the only things I'm sending. If I'm selling a home locally or if I'm listing a home locally, we're also sending it out separately. This is something for our farm that goes out no matter what. And look, I go into more details, right? This way I know what the postcards have. What do the local market stats have? Got it. What are the things to do for the fall? Well, you know, we wrote them out here. Go to the ranch. There's a surfing coach, right, that we've used. Local, Los Angeles horseback riding, Malibu Beach Gourmet, and Malibu Wines. People love this one, the Malibu Wines one. Things to do for the winter. The old place. I love the old place. I think Jake's on here. Jake, did you go to the old place with us that one time when we took the team? Yes, I actually did. Wasn't that badass, dude? It was really good, yeah. Yeah, it's like a little old, like, I don't even know what it is. It's like a little house, but they serve breakfast and lunch. And the line's out the door. It's like a little old ranch place. But look, these are the things that people love and they want to know more about. Stop treating your mailings like spam. This is what sets you apart right here. Now, we go in deeper. You see, we took time to outline this stuff. Top places to eat locally. Top places for dessert. Dude, we don't take this lightly and we're always changing this up. Best local parks. Top five books to read. Yeah, these are books I've read. So this, this is going out. And look, I picked a local book that a lot of people in Malibu don't know about, but the King and Queen of Malibu, my wife read that book and she's like, check this book out. It tells a whole history of how Malibu was started and they're thinking of making it into a movie. So of course I added on here, right? Now, this is what I want you to do. People listening in, this, this starts setting you apart. People then look forward to the mailers that you're sending out. And they're like, oh, it's, it's, one of, it's one of Tristan's mailers. It's not just look and throw. It's look and hold, right? Oh, there's five books. I, I need to maybe take a look at this. The parks, boom. So you start seeing there's a bigger difference there, Joe. We, we start going deeper into, into what it needs to look like. A lot of questions on this, uh, Tristan. So basically, a lot of people asking if they get a copy of the schedule that you have that you just showed up on the screen. Um, another one is how many of those would be postcards versus a newsletter? Uh, all, or, of, all of these are postcards. All of them postcards? Okay. Yeah. All right. Every single one of these are postcards. Do you use, okay, the mailer company. Did you already name Because somebody just asked that question too. Do you use a you mailer? Know, you, can use, you can use Corfac. The biggest challenge for us was the design. Corfac doesn't design them. That's why we were so happy when we found, when we found our lender that does it, right? Jeff Fitzer, um, they design it for us. I kind of give them an idea of what I want and they go ahead and design it for us and then they send us the proof and then they mail it out. So you've got to find somebody that, that designs them for you. Uh, we, we, haven't, we hadn't been able to find anybody. So I suggest going local. Uh, if you do need my lender's information, he is a national lender, so. Uh, you can do that. Tanya, you can also send this out as a newsletter, but um, a lot of people are, are going to be able to grab that in the mail and see it, right? And save it because it's in the form of a, of a long newsletter. So we also send out newsletters and our newsletters look completely different than what you're used to getting in the mail too. So the idea is always giving value, right? Always coming from a, how much time do we have? Oh, we already went over. So let me see if I can show you the, the newsletters that we send out. Give me a sec. Um, we sidetracked, but this is all good information so people understand what to do and what, uh, what not to do. Let me see if I have a mailer, my email, I mean, my newsletter. Let me see if I have the template open, campaigns, 
email templates. Uh, this is one that I send out for my team member. Let me see if we got it. Preview, preview mode. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm gonna set, show you the newsletter. So this is the newsletter. This one's I made for Luis. Luis is on my team. And so this is what it looks like. Here's the latest. This is one of the ones we sent out already. Uh, the world's changing, blah, blah, crap, crap. It's got an article, an article that's relevant to what's happening. The economy is tanking, so why are home prices dropping? Right, you click it, it takes you to the article. Next, the future is faster than you think. Hey, check out the book that I'm reading, Joe. This is the book I'm reading, right? Very cool. Oh, by the way, this is the, this is the podcast I'm listening to. You should check it out. It's really fun. Brian is the guy that created the, the show, Billions, right? So you might want to check that out. It's really fun, really good. And by the way, check out our latest listing. It's in Malibu, right? You can dive into it. That's our newsletter, right? Now people start looking forward to it because we're not spamming them with a whole bunch of crap. The biggest difference is we're not giving you crap. We're giving you stuff that you want to take a look at right? The biggest response we get on our newsletter is, wow, that was great. That was different. Thanks, Tristan. Can you tell us about this? Can you tell us about that? Right? Because we're approaching it very different. So um, that's, that's been a big, uh, big difference for us as well. You see, now you start seeing a trend into what I'm doing, right? Let me, um, what screen can you see, buddy? I just want to see what screen you're seeing. I'm seeing your 24 pieces per year. Okay, perfect. Um, yep. All right. So we got that. I want to skyrocket through this call action we use to put a phone number onto the postcards or to newsletters. You can put a phone number for anything. I have call action for a different phone number for call action on my signs for sales signs on properties for mailers. Right. And also for newsletters and for, so I just want to be able to track if somebody's calling me where they're calling me from. Right. That's the ROI. Uh, for If you don't want to go and use MailChimp like we did, uh, you can use Home Actions on the right. They actually design the content for you, which is great for some of us who don't have time to create it. Or you can go to Breakthrough Broker, which is free. Breakthrough Broker gives you the newsletter templates, and it's free. Go to Breakthrough Broker. Eric Sachs is the owner. He's one of our friends. Uh, so I always love giving him props. Plus, it's free. I mean, you can't be free. And Agent Legends is what I was talking about for drips. Once people connect with us, we put them on different drips. Uh, Agent Legend allows us to, to do that. And here you go. You can have send out cards. You can have handwritten. Uh, I think Bond Co. just went out of business, so ignore the very first one at the very top. But these are, these are companies you can use to mail out things. Like if I just finished talking to Joe and he referred somebody to me to connect with deeper in a community, I'm going to go to send out cards or AM cards and be like, hey, Let's send, a, let's send a brownie. Let's send a letter to Joe's telling him thanks. So uh, lastly, reanalyze. I already went way over time, but check this out. The most important factors in choosing an agent to sell a home. Again, reputation. Reputation, honesty, knowledge, and a friend knows you, right? The rest of them doesn't even matter. I had one on there. It, it was like 4% or less really care what brokerage you're with, which is crazy, right? The amount of time we put into thinking what brokerage we're in, how it actually matters and how people decide to use us, mm -mm. it doesn't matter as much. It's that reputation, right? Now, if they can tie that reputation to your brokerage, that's different, right? Especially if you're a newer agent or if you're breaking into an area that you don't have a reputation in. So think about that. And now when you're looking to reanalyze things, think of farm size. That's why we ended up at 2000. We went up at one point we were mailing um, 6,000. We cut it back down, right? Some areas weren't working. So you can also go the other way. You can go higher, right? I have a friend who's mailing 20,000 pieces a month, right? That's where all of his business comes from, but he slowly got there. And so it works next. Is, is your branding on point? Do you need to tweak it? Do you need to change it? Content, are you delivering the right content? Are people opening it? Are people emailing you back? Are people calling you back? And then should you have events, right? Are you breaking into the community? And maybe you should have an Easter event. Maybe you should have a Halloween event. Maybe you should do something else for the community that involves them, right? Next, 
what can you automate? I'm always looking at what I can automate. So uh, that's what I love doing. And um, lastly, just remember leverage. Leverage is the leverage is is the new hustle. What we like to say, right? Hustle is hustle. Of course, you need to hustle, but leverage is a big piece of that. And I think uh, we often forget to be able to leverage things. That's how we're able to grow. Uh, let me see what questions I may have missed. Um, any any questions I missed, buddy? That that you think I should have um, picked here? Let's see here. Uh, is the newsletter digital, Patty? My newsletter is digital. Uh, Trista, what do you use to design the newsletter? I use MailChimp. I design it myself in MailChimp. You can use Home Action. They design it for you. Or go into Breakthrough Broker, which has templates that you can use for free. Uh, Pam, you can also, that's right, you can do door-to-door -door delivery once we're out of COVID or you're in an area that uh, is safe to do so. Then you could definitely use that as door-to-door -door if you're going to do that, which I highly recommend as well. Brian, Newsletter sent to database or Facebook targeting? Brian, newsletter sent to the database. And my newsletter specifically sent to uh, my whole database. We have a newsletter that's specifically for our past clients in close sphere that's a little different because we want it to feel a little bit more special, right? And so we do that as well. Lucy, can I can sign up. I can sign you up to Breakthrough Broker. Oh, perfect. Lucy, yeah, Lucy can sign you up if you don't have a, a Breakthrough Broker account. Lucy, are you with a title company? If you are, just let me know which one. Uh, let's see here. Who else? Kelly, I'm in Washington. Oh, talking to Lucy, got it. Tanya, great information. That was awesome. Thanks, Tanya, appreciate it. It's all in the book in detail. So if you missed anything, uh, Joe's got it all in chapter three there. Uh, let's see, Amanda, do you suggest having more than one farm? Amanda, initially to start, no. I think I want you to get down how it looks to farm in one area. You're gonna work out the kinks. You're going to work out the most important, the hardest part for us was getting that, getting the designer to design the postcards for us. Because in our area, branding is really important. People want to stand out. Even though I have some crazy stories on the crappiest postcards delivered and us getting phone calls back when we're presenting, um, it still matters. So for us, it was that. And that's why, I, that's why it took us a while to scale up on farming. Uh, it wasn't until a few years ago that we finally did it. But for us, it's been it's been that, the designer. So for us, it's really good. Uh, let's see. Can we see the yearly calendar again? Yep, I'll send you that. San Martha Chen, San Diego, got it. Old Republic, got it. Old Republic, good. I like Old Republic. Kelly, Lucy, what's your contact info? Okay, good. Lucy, give everybody your contact info. I see it. Gene, would love a copy of the slides and the funnel. Joe, everything's in the book, right? Including all the resources. So including right, your perfect. schedule, uh, include the 24 month schedule, what to put in there, uh, the 24, uh, 24 uh, send out schedule, the, all, all the, the little tree of the uh, top and middle and bottom of funnel and the resources you also just listed too. All right, let me grab that link again for, so everybody can pick up the book. Joe wrote this book, put it all together for us and um, it's, it's a really good book. So I'm not, I'm not the only one on there. It's got some amazing people on there as well. So let me put that on there. Pick it up. Lucy, pick up the book and share all that good information with all your people and everybody else. There's the Amazon link. For those of you who don't see the Amazon link, the book is called Secrets of Top Selling Agents. And that's the one that was published September 12th, 2020, literally two days ago by Joe. Joe, did you self-publish that or how does, how does that work? We did it through Amazon's publishing arm. Um, we used to be called Create Space, but yeah, we did it through there. Dude, can you, can you send me the details on doing that? Cause I'd love to publish my own. I, I'm yeah, I'll put you, you know, yeah, exactly. I will for sure do that. Absolutely. Cool. Anything else you want to add, my friend? I just want to say thanks again. Thank you, everybody. Uh, this was a great webinar. And I really thought this was so important to talk about, Tristan, because it really, I mean, that, that was one of the most powerful episodes talking exactly. You, you can see the engagement we're getting here, which is awesome. That is the, the, the engagement we had on that webinar, which tells me it's an amazing episode. It needs to be out there. So that's why we published it in the book and very excited about that. So thanks again for having me on your show. Well, dude, let's do this again, man. Absolutely. I think, uh, we could definitely go deeper. I mean, there's some stories I didn't tell that are absolutely amazing from just mailing. Who would have thought mailing, right? But uh, yeah. So thank you, Joe. I appreciate you putting that together, man. That's uh, a lot of cool things in one book. So thank you for that. 
Thanks again, Tristan. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate everybody being on. And this isn't on Facebook, but it will be on our YouTube channel. As soon as we get the recording, we're going to throw it onto the uh, Facebook channel as well. Thanks, Joe. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks again. Bye-bye.